the good old American pastime of collecting comic books and immersed viewers in a warped perception of comedic satirization. My intent is to deconstruct popular notions that our generation considers to be the social norm. Through a series of comic book images that are painted and combined with text, I begin to address issues of gender roles, sexuality, race, and politics. Don't talk about it, just do it. It's his method of waking up an art major. Francisco Goya's works are also an inspiration to me, especially the black paintings and the creativity behind the series. Another artist that I can relate to is René Magritte because he is one of the best at creating a dream world where the subjects are very realistic. Most of all, I'm inspired just to do better and be the best I can be while uplifting one another. Painting is the primary outlet for my creativity. As a woman and as an artist, I am not afraid to make powerful, relentless figures that are bold, vibrant, and oftentimes alarming to the viewer. Through abstracted color and the feminine figure, I evoke strength, sexuality, self-awareness, femininity, and provocation. Overall, I want the viewer to be invited into a discourse with each painting, questioning my visual intentions. Why those colors? Why this title? Why is the figure engaged in that pose or gesture? Each work is a system of interdependent elements that collaborate to portray an aspect of relationships. His aesthetic decisions with regard to form and material are informed by the need to represent specific personal experience. Dawkins Rose's art practice is more concerned with the poetic than the narrative, and the work is never purely literal or figurative. I've been told that I am not the easiest person to read. The goal of my work is to fill in the gaps. I choose to paint women because it makes the artwork more personal to me. They're nude because I feel that in that state, you are your most vulnerable, and at the same time, there is a sense of no inhibitions. Nudity also comes with some taboo attached to it. Done one way, it seems artistic and pleasing to the eye, but done another way, it could be seen as vulgar. I found myself experimenting with methods of staining paper. From using items found in my apartment, such as tea and soy sauce, I find that they give the paper an organic feel that plays with the curved linear lines of the figures. Other than my passion for art, I have a love for psychology. My ongoing goal is to constantly look for new ways to incorporate psychology into my artwork. Currently, I am dealing with the theme of autism and its different characteristics. This body of work speaks directly to my experiences over the past summer when I worked with children with autism. The different pieces speak to the characteristics, symptoms, and social problems of autism. As I move forward as an artist, I will continue to keep myself open to new techniques and materials. I cannot see myself settling in one place as an artist. Transitioning and constantly growing are my goals as an artist. With these two goals in mind, I will consistently be able to push myself to new levels and constantly strive to realize my greatest potential. I see my approach in genre leans toward the new wave of mixed media, digital art, and painting. I also present nuances of collage. My stylistic inspiration comes from combining styles of artist Aaron Douglas, Emma Amos, Faith Ringgold, and the stylistic and mixed media art of Lynn Marshall Linnemeyer. These artists have immensely contributed to the influence of my work by the way they present strong messages through almost animated, playful imagery. The vapid, translucent colors within Douglas' work are very exemplary to the layering that I produce within my images using computer art and painting. These are four artists that I see my work reflecting and responding to stylistically. I hope to continue to work in mixed media works and to produce works that will respond to the communities I interact with around the world.